Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter but not the spirit of a request. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, lady did not receive what she wanted because of her stupidity. The second story, I wake up patients in the hospital every two hours. The third story, I didn't let my manager go to the bar after her rules. The first story is, Rude lady gets the ham she deserves, not the ham she wants. Rude B equals rude B. Me equals me. Manager equals manager. I worked in a deli, though this was a deli inside a grocery store, and all we did was cut meat. There was this really rude lady who would always order this smokehouse ham, but she would always call it plain ham. Now, we did have a plain ham. No extra flavor, just ham, salt, and water, but she wanted the smokehouse ham. She was probably mid-40s, always dressed to the nines. For a Meyer shopping trip, WTF? With designer sunglasses and a fancy hat. Inside the store where surprise surprise, there's no sun. And she always bead when there was a line at the deli counter, which was always because she did all her grocery shopping on the weekend. One day after telling her repeatedly that smoked ham is in fact not plain ham, when she made her weekly appearance, it was during a huge customer rush. I saw her join the line, Six people deep with two people working the counter, the horror, and get progressively more angry, as she had to wait the five minutes until I helped her. We're talking foot tapping, muttering under her breath, looking at her watch, dramatic sighs, the works. I keep an eye on her while I and my coworker are clearly rushing to help get the line down. Finally she gets to me, and before I can even finish my first sentence, hi, how can I help you, I get cut off. Rude B, about time, get me half a pound of plain ham now. I know what she wants, but what she asked for is on sale, in the case right in front of her, under her very nose, and since it was on sale, I'd pre-sliced a full tray of it, and it was ready to go. Plausible deniability. I reach down, grab half a pound of meat, throw it in the Ziploc baggie for her, weigh it, slap the sticker on, hand it to her, and then, before she can realize her mistake, I say, thanks for shopping with Meyer, have a great day, with my brightest customer service smile, and immediately turn to the next customer. Hi, how can I help you today? Because I'm still putting on the one man it's busy and I'm working hard show for the cameras and managers. Rude B gets this look like I just took an SH in a baggie and handed it to her. While I'm helping the current customer, she stomps back over to me and interrupts me. Excuse me, what is this? Confused look on my face. Half a pound of plain ham, like you asked for? I replied as I walked back to the customer I was helping. Finished her transaction and started another. I can see that she's still waiting for me to come back to her out of the corner of my eye, but she made it very clear what she wanted, that she was in a hurry, and as I've already given it to her, she didn't need any further assistance. She gets mad, silently, just watching as I cheerfully help all the other customers. The line doesn't die down. She stomps off to the customer service desk and returns with not my manager, but the entire store manager about 15 minutes later. He comes into the deli and says, the lady out there said you gave her the wrong order with an innocent look on my face. I remember her, she was rude in line and at the counter. The extent of her order was, and I quote, get me half a pound of plain ham now. I gave her the half pound of ham. It's on sale this week and the entire transaction took under 30 seconds, because we already had plain ham sliced for the sale this week on plain ham. I was super polite to her. Manager rolls his eyes and says, she says she doesn't want this ham, she wants the other plain ham. I reply, we literally only sell one brand of plain ham. We don't have other plain hams, that's it, and it's on sale this week. He walks out from behind the counter and starts to explain to her how wrong she is. When she starts pointing to the smokehouse ham that she really wanted, she is furious, red-faced, throwing a quiet little temper tantrum as the manager returns to me. She said she wants that plain ham, with a confused look on my face, but that's smoked ham. She said plain, are you sure she wants smoked? This is smokehouse ham, it's definitely smoke flavored and not plain. Manager goes back to double check. He comes back to me and confirms with me. I look her dead in the eye and say, I'm so sorry for the confusion, ma'am. I'll go get your smoked ham sliced. Next time, please make sure that you're ordering the correct ham when you're at the counter. The only plain ham we sell is this one. Holding it up for her to see. Smokehouse ham is a smoked ham. Let us know that you want the smokehouse and we won't run into this issue again. And since I said it all with my perfect customer service face on, while standing next to the store manager, she just had to stand there while her puckered lemon face threatened to become a black hole and be lectured by me, a 20-year-old. All in all, I got the pettiest of revenges, by wasting her time, 
and putting her in a position where I was able to just this side of condescendingly talk down to her and explain her mistake in public with the crowd because it never stopped being busy while the head manager stood next to us. My manager said that he got a compliment from the store manager on how well I handled an upset and abusive customer later that day. The second story is, not happy for me to use my professional judgment? Fine, that's fine. So I work in a hospital, an old hospital, on one of the oldest wards on the top floor. For anyone not in the UK right now, we're experiencing a heat wave like hasn't been seen for the past 40 years. It's not rained for a few good months, and it's just all around unpleasant to live in. I've been working night shifts to combat the heat, and for the past few weeks have been nursing two 30-something-year-old patients I'll call Sandy and Amy. These two haven't been too bad with me, calling me their favorite nurse when I'm on shift and other such bullocks, but they've been downright rude and aggressive to my colleagues on day shift. Security has been called more than once to de-escalate their tantrums, so I knew to be cautious around them and keep them at arm's length. A few shifts go by uneventful, or so I thought. The other day we got the full rundown in handover. Both Sandy and Amy had complained about every single staff member who'd interacted with them, from someone sitting at a desk to one of the healthcare professionals flirting with male patients. The comments were vile and bitter, all completely unfounded, and literally nothing more than two women trapped in bed, having nothing better to do than make up stories. We work D hard, and if we get 30 seconds to sit down, we're gonna do it, and we might even have a drink at the desk to rehydrate ourselves. 2. How dare we apparently? The night team, including me, were the subject of a few complaints about flirting and talking about holiday plans. Not even talking loudly, just literally talking about holiday plans. One of the main complaints was how care rounds, where we document a patient's pain, position, and wounds every two hours, had been completed without us physically asking those questions. They were in constant pain, so why had we documented pain scores as zero? We obviously needed to ask to get a truly accurate score, they said, and refused to allow us to use our clinical experience to fill in the chart. Now, if a patient is in pain, a fully independent, oriented adult patient, they can call us and tell us how much pain they're in, so we can manage it with analgesia. They have call bells. They can even walk to the nurse's station if needs be. And even if they're not able to vocalize their pain, e.g. if they have dementia, we can look out for telltale signs of pain, such as facial contortion, fidgeting, moaning, etc. A patient saying they have 10 out of 10 pain, yet who sits there watching Jeremy Kyle while shoving chocolate raisins down their gullet, probably isn't in the throes of childbirth-like agony. And likewise, a patient who says they're in no pain, yet they have beads of sweat forming on their brow and are grinding their teeth down like a bear on a trout, probably has some pain. And someone sound asleep likely isn't feeling pain, as they're rested and relaxed enough for their body to allow them to drift into the ether. If they wake up in pain, that of course would be documented. However, the complaint was that we hadn't documented their actual pain score, and obviously, according to them, we couldn't know this actual pain score without asking them. I spoke with both of them and reiterated their concerns. I explained how we were trained in pain management, etc., yet both agreed that they would like to be asked during the shift. So, like a good HCP, from the time my shift started to the time it ended, every two hours instead of just walking by and seeing them sleeping soundly, I woke them up to ask how their pain was. Sleeping like a baby? Up you get. Just drifting off into a fitful slumber? Wake up, Sandy. It's time to document your pain score. Finally passed out despite the bothersome heat? I'll be shaking you awake there, matey. From the time my shift started at 20 until it ended at 7.30, every two hours on the dot, I woke them both up to accurately document their pain. Of course, they reported no pain at every wake-up call. Three days of this goes by, and last night before lights out, Sandy tells me not to wake her during the night, as with the heat, she's barely getting any sleep, due to being woken up every two hours. Amy agrees. I say that unfortunately, we need to accurately document pain scores, and as they weren't happy with us using our professional clinical judgment to ascertain whether they were in pain or not, we would need to continue to ask. Unless, unless they were happy with using our professional experience, to note if there was any sign of pain while sleeping. Yeah, it turns out that's a good idea apparently. Who knew? And the last story is, no one cuts the line? Yes, ma'am. First, a little backstory. When I was in college, I was a bouncer at one of the main college bars. There were five bars on the same street right off of campus that got packed on the weekend. Most of the bouncers knew each other and would let each other cut the line at their bar for the same implied treatment if they had a weekend off. Just to be clear, we were only letting five to six people cut the line a night. Usually when another bouncer came to my door, I would just open and let him in, hand him a wristband and he would walk away as to not disturb the line. Now to the story. One night I let a bouncer cut the line discreetly as usual, except this time someone in line started yelling at me cursing, blah, blah, blah. I just said that he worked at the bar. 
This tactic usually works on drunk people who aren't thinking clearly. The guy apparently was still peeved and told my manager what happened after he got in. This particular manager was a huge hypocrite. She preached the rule and was always on my A about having the correct count in case the fire marshal showed up, but on her night off would bring in 15 friends through the back door and tell me to equalize the count, i.e. let 15 people out before one could come in. This is a key example of how to peeve off a line of people. So this night she came up to me and asked why I let this guy cut in line. Obviously she knows who he is, and I say he works at such and such bar. She chewed my A out for 5 minutes or so and says, no one effing cuts the line ever. I shrug it off and go about my bouncing duties. This happens somewhat often. People get peeved because they see us let someone in. The managers were usually relaxed about it because they got to cut at other bars as well. Well several weeks later I'm at the door again on a Friday night. The whole street is packed, at least 50 people in line, and I see the manager leave the bar across the street. I almost couldn't stop smiling when I saw it. That bee walks up to the door, doesn't even acknowledge me and tries to walk in. I calmly put my arm across the door and say, I'm sorry miss, I'm at capacity. If you'd like to come in, you'll have to go to the back of the line. She turns and slurring her speech says to F off. She's my manager. I said, yes ma'am, that's true, but you aren't working tonight and there are no effing cuts ever. I can still see the blood start to boil in her head. She starts to chew me out as I'm accustomed to from her. Yeah, I'm having to bite my inner lip to keep from smiling and laughing. I still have my arm across the door so she can't walk in and she tells me to get the MOD manager on duty that's working that night. Again, I calmly say I'm sorry, but I can't leave the door unattended or who knows what could happen, but she's welcome to call the manager. She's so peeved off the veins in her head are visible, she's cursing and throwing a fit. I just go back to checking IDs and giving wristbands. Finally, the manager walks up and asks me what the F I'm doing. I let him know about the no effing cuts ever policy. He kind of puts his fingers on his forehead and shakes his head like, gee idiot, why is this happening? For some stupid reason, the MOD sides with me and told her that rules are rules. He must have been sick of her BS too. I had to bite down so hard on my inner lip to keep from laughing, I made my lip bleed. The look of surprise and anger on her face was priceless. By now, the line died down to maybe 10 people, so she shuffles to the back staring daggers at me the whole time. This may be the best part. She gets to the front of the line and is still very wobbly from drinking heavily. One person leaves and she's about to walk in and I very politely inform her that she's too intoxicated to come in tonight. She just stood there for what felt like an eternity, probably just 15 seconds or so staring at me, and mumbled F off. You could see the defeat in her eyes at this point, and she turned and left without another word. I hope you love these stories. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to know when the new video comes out.